Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and we are here at Telecom TV's very first own event, which is a DSP Leaders Forum in Windsor in West London. Now, I'm talking with Constantine Polychronopoulos. Have I got that right? Absolutely. I hope I have. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Constantine, you are very focused on charting the development of network slicing. Can you tell us what you mean by network slicing? Because I've heard a couple of definitions of this. Right. Well, that's, that's, I feel passionate about this subject. <laughs> and um, I believe that's where the future lies, the ability to truly virtualize the network, offer uh, uh, networks as a service. Um, and um, uh, I'm taking an approach that essentially is holistic in the sense that we want to be able to uh, truly slice the radio side as well as the edge, the near edge, the far edge, uh, and the packet core in a way that uh, uh, enables the CSPs to create end-to-end -end slices. Think of them as an MVNO, hosting an MVNO on your existing infrastructure. And at VMware, your existing infrastructure has specific meaning, right? It can be your on-prem yep. as well as public cloud providers. Uh, it's going to be, again, hybrid, multi-cloud based. That's your infrastructure as a CSP. Yep. And that's where I believe things are going to evolve. Now, on top of that, we're going to be able to enable the operators to create, to onboard, for example, MVNOs and allow MVNOs to further slice or tier their own uh, network uh, which now is going to be a software-defined network, right? A fully virtualized network, quote-unquote slice, yeah. that um, is realized on the CSP infrastructure, virtualized infrastructure. I believe once we get there and the technologies are maturing uh, slowly but steadily towards uh, us being able to offer that kind of service in the, in the next, uh, you know, in, in the near future, um, I think that will enable operators, uh, CSPs, to offer new business models, uh, address the challenge of IoT, which is very disparate use cases that ride on the same network mm -hmm. in a very efficient way by tiering the, the services that they offer to each particular use case and manage and have complete visibility to all the different uh, tenants in a multi-tenant virtualized network. That's the meaning of slicing. Indeed. Okay, good, thank you. Can you tell us then, Constantine, what technologies are actually involved and what the benefits the slicing will bring to the CSPs and perhaps even more importantly, their customers? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, again, uh, the, the necessary requirement is virtualization, end-to-end -end virtualization. Uh, once you have software-centric, software-defined networks, you can start programmatically doing, you know, defining overlays like slices, right? So uh, virtualization, VMware has led, you know, the evolution of virtualization. Uh, we can call it mature technology. Uh, there are still challenges when it comes to fundamental technologies like distributed data management uh, in a multi-cloud, distributed multi-cloud environment. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, when we go up the stack, we have now to face the uh, challenge of orchestrating workloads across distributed, highly distributed clouds, right? Uh, and doing automatic placement of VNFs or services um, in, an, in an optimal way so that the compute, the storage is provisioned exactly where the application or the service requires it to, uh, to be available. We have, you know, some issues to still uh, solve when it comes to security, end-to-end -end security. Um, and high availability, uh, but again, these are not major, you know, roadblocks. These are technologies that exist today. The question is, how do you efficiently integrate them? Um, and I believe that, you know, with the um, proliferation of 5G, network slicing is going to become essentially a requirement, a hard requirement, right? Um, 3GPP uh, has anchored the specifications on three pillars, uh, requirements for uh, 5G. The enhanced mobile broadband, uh, the so-called ultra high reliability, low latency use case, 
and the massive machine type communications. These are three very different use cases, right? Yeah. And you have a myriad of them in between. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, onboard these disparate use cases on one type of network, right? 5G network, right? Unless you are able to tailor connectivity, bandwidth, um, and um, uh, services to specific use cases, um, we will not be able to you know, satisfy you know, the expectations of 5G, the massive IoT use cases, the you know, enhanced, uh, uh, enhanced uh, mobile broadband, etc. Okay. Remember, part of the question was as well, what will the CSPs derive from this in terms of benefits? And, and again, as I said, perhaps even more importantly, yeah. what will the customers finally get? Well, uh, let me start from the latter. The sure. customers will be able to um, um, ride the benefits of 5G, which is um, low latency, high bandwidth connectivity. Uh, ubiquitous connectivity, assuming that you know, in urban, uh, you know, uh, urban environments, uh, micro cells and macro cells will be able to uh, enable continuous connectivity, right? And you can argue that will be the case also in rural areas as well. So the uh, ubiquitous connectivity along with uh, high quality connectivity is going to be the, the immediate uh, benefit. Uh, for enterprise users, the benefit uh, comes at higher levels, including the ability to unify communications and application offering across any type of access, because part of 5G is going to also bring convergence of access, right, uh, wireline and wireless. Mm -hmm. And there was, therefore, service delivery is going to become essentially um, seamless across access types, right? Uh, to the CSPs, the benefits can be transformational, new revenue generating use cases, like you know, the various uh, shades of grade along IoT, from um, you know, everybody keeps talking about smart cities, uh, and some of the use cases within the smart city, like video surveillance, are concrete, and are going to happen earlier than sooner than later. Some others, like you know, automated traffic management and traffic control, is going to take a bit more work, but um, with the availability of bandwidth and low latency connectivity, we have the, the ability to also process data in real time and, and have the network be responsive to the end user, whether that's a, 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 you know, a consumer or an enterprise, and offer essentially instantaneous um, uh, context of, of you know, uh, what you do, uh, being, being able to interact with your um, you know, sports uh, streaming video. And uh, click on a on a on an icon and get information about the player in real time, right? So, bringing the ability to uh, host intelligence. Everybody keeps talking about AI, but I'll put it intelligence in general, data analytics in the network, and offer that, monetize that by offering services, value add services to the end customer. So CSPs are very well positioned to harness the technology and translate into revenue generating business models. Interesting stuff. Constantine Polychronopoulos, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. It's a pleasure.